in terms of when, when we first started, all right? Let's talk about mm -hmm. when we first started. Where were you at weight-wise when we first started? More or less, you remember? 182. Exactly, that's correct, all right? Where are you at currently? Uh, 170. 170, all right? That's, yep. And that's a total of? 12, Yeah. Right? Yeah, more yeah. Than that. So yeah, how, how does that make you feel? I'm just really glad, you know. I um, feel better, and I know I wanted to make make this change in myself for like a long time because I was like, you know, I wasn't like over overweight, but like I was like reaching the Coast Guard limits where I was like, I think 185 was my max. I was 182, and I was like, damn, that's close. Yeah. So, no, I had to. I had to do something, and um, I'm glad I did. But now that I have this going on, and I have a um, what's it called consistency, now it's like easier. So even after we finish the program, I'm pretty sure I'm still gonna keep going to the gym and then just um, working out. You know? <laughs> Hell yes! Hell yes! <laughs> Yo, that's that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. You know what yep. I mean? I literally, and that's this, literally that's like the whole purpose of my program you know that's that's what I have in mind you know when I first start or what's not I always want whether it be like my initial 30 day challenge I want it to be like a, a shot of espresso you know what I mean that, that, that right. puts a dent into your fitness journey uh, mm -hmm. expand and tap into the reservoir of terms of uh, what, what is possible and uh, mm -hmm. in hopes of like even after that you know builds a drive for you know because right. literally once you literally sometimes that's all you need you know that little spark you know that little push yeah. And after that, you, you, over time, it becomes easier, like like it has for you. You you develop that unwavering drive, which inevitably, like I mean, you, you literally you didn't miss. I feel like you didn't miss any freaking session. And like I said, when you, when you did, you compensated for it, you know, and you, you kept. Yeah. Like, we were on the same page, you know. Right. You up, you let me know. Communication line was loosed, and uh, yeah, I think you fucking, you definitely fucking build a drive. So you gotta, you gotta keep it going. You know what I mean? You gotta keep it going. Yeah. Right? Yep. So you know, like, congrats, and I applaud you. Yeah. Thank you. Happy. Yeah. Happy. All right. So having said that, you know, let's not get chuckled up anymore. You know, said it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> What's good, fam? Clark here from All Fall Kinetics. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Level Up series. Now, in my previous vlog, I went over a upper body training session. If you haven't checked that out, do go ahead and give it a peep. I'll put the link in the description. Having said that, I know it's only right that I follow it up with a nice, solid lower body training session. So in this vlog, I'll be going over tips, techniques, and some of the best lower body exercises I use for myself as well as the people I work with. So do hope you enjoy. Stay tuned and let's get it. So I'm kicking things off a couple acclimation sets to get my mortar unit primed up for the first exercise, which is going to be a barbell box squat. I try not to go too crazy with the acclimation sets. So two to three sets of 12 to 15 reps with the added warm-up routine I did earlier on in this vlog tends to do the trick. Now, if you want me to give you a detailed overview of what that warm-up routine entails, just drop it in the comment below and I'll make that happen in a subsequent vlog. Now, for this first exercise, I'm going to do two sets of 10 to 12 reps with a slightly light to moderate workload, nothing crazy. I'm more so focused on my form and the full range of movement. Now, I'm using the box, or in this case, bench has my stopping point, which breaks the downward momentum of the movement, forcing me to power up through the eccentric range of movement, which fires up my quads as well as glutes at the peak point of this exercise. Now the second exercise is gonna be a standard barbell squat. So I pretty much just removed the box or <laughs> bench. So now I'm digging a bit deeper. I drop the rep count, bump up my intensity index. By that, I mean I bump up my workload as well. So with this exercise, I'm just room for two sets of six to eight reps. Needless to say, I'm still trying to prioritize my form. 
The beauty about the first exercise, it conditions me to be strict with my vertical line of movement, which sort of wavers over to this exercise where I don't have the bench or the extra support. So with that, I try to keep my torso and the workload as vertical as possible going down. And I try to do the same coming up as opposed to having my butt sort of go up before my chest. I try to have them go up cohesively because I notice if I don't do that, what happens is more resistance is placed on my lower back and the posterior chain rather than my quads. So just something to think about and note. The third movement or exercise in this training sesh is none other than the dumbbell goblet squat which is a great accessory movement to target your quads and to strengthen your squat overall. As with any squat movement, the wider the stance, the more hammies, inner thigh, and glutes are going to be engaged. So adopting a narrow stance is going to allow you to focus more so on the quadriceps. That along with the elevated stance like the one I'm doing here, automatically takes the load off your posterior chain, allowing for more upright stance and therefore leveraging more workload forward, which is ideal for optimal quads activation. Exercise number four, single leg RDL. Now, the main mechanics of this exercise is often confused with that of the stiff leg deadlift. And while the stiff leg deadlift is focused on full extension, optimizing the RDL is more so depending on a great hip hinge patterning. That is to say, you get more out of this exercise by prioritizing your hip hinge or pushing your hip backwards rather than focusing on the extension in terms of you know how flexible you are to get the weight to the ground, closest to the ground. Taking one step further, what I do with this unilateral stand is put my resting foot slightly backwards, or resting leg slightly backwards, which gives me a steeper hip hinge flexion. This topple with a good tempo is bound to set your hamstrings on fire. Of course, with a good activation of the glutes at the peak of this exercise. Static quad calf raise. What's unique about this body weight exercise is you get to elicit additional stimuli to your quads with a low time on attention while focused and working on your calves. So standing on an elevated platform as seen here allows for optimal contraction of the calves, keeping them engaged in both the concentric and eccentric movement going up and down. A little hack, what I try to do is hold my quads or contract them at the top range of the movement for about one to two seconds which allows you to really tone those calves with this body weight exercise and optimize the exercise in its entirety. So to finish off this lower body training sesh, we're going to do a nice little burnout superset for our core or abdominals, okay? So the first exercise is going to be hanging leg raise. Now for the more advanced folks, feel free to add resistance by, you know, maybe using dumbbells for the leg raise, like I'm doing here. Then immediately after we finish off the leg raise, what we're gonna do is execute the second exercise in this superset, which is going to be the kinetic Copenhagen plank. With this, unique exercise, we're taking the standard Copenhagen plank and adding a dynamic movement to it. As seen in this video, this is going to be implementing knee drives for farther engagement of the lower abdominals. Now the oblique and core is gonna be engaged for the entirety of this movement, keeping your torso upwards and hips from touching the ground, right? Now the bonus to this exercise is the fact that it is a great adductor exercise for the static limb. So definitely something to note. And that's all she wrote. Listen, I hope you found some sort of value in this video. You're only gonna keep on getting better. Having said that, you are stick around for the next video in this series. It's gonna be same place, same time next week, right here. Up till then, if you have any questions, comment, concern, Drop them in the comment section below. Just want to say what's up. Drop them in the comment section below. And I'll get back to you ASAP. 
I'll also be putting a free downloadable file of this training session in its entirety, so you can check that out in the description box. Let me know if that's something you found useful. And yeah, turn on that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace.